of the things I've always done, like when I even learned NLP, one of the first real dynamic set of tools I learned psychologically, I would go to these classes with these psychologists and psychiatrists, and we'd have an all-day session, which their idea of all day was four hours. <laughs> you know, it'd be like, it'd be like we'd start at 10, and at noon we're taking lunch. I'm like, where the hell are we going? You know, oh, we're going to lunch for an hour and a half. And then we come back at 1.30, and sure enough, by 3.30 or 4, it was the end of the program. And I was like, Jesus, you know, you didn't even do a quarter of a day. So I took the rest of the time, and I extracted everything I could from what I learned. There are people with 10 times more skill than I had or ability, but my level of application compared to theirs, I dwarfed it. And it's because while I was still there, I didn't leave the environment. I've always had this belief. If you want to be successful at anything in life, never leave the site of setting a goal without doing something that commits you to fulfillment. If you get, like, you're in state, right, when you do something. While you're in state, that's the time to commit yourself to something that makes you follow through. How many know what I'm talking about here? Say, I. So I'd call somebody up. I'd schedule something. I'd walk in the next meeting. I'd sign up for the class. I'd enroll the guy who was going to mentor me. I'd set the meeting with a mastermind of people I met. I did something so that whatever I committed to, there was something when I went home that would pull me there. It's structure. In fact, I'll give you five C's to RPM just as a quick warm-up for you. How's that? If you don't remember, it'll be okay, but it'll only be in your unconscious for when you go work with a coach. These are the five C's. Everything that comes in your mind, anything you can think of, because we're going to basically do a little mini RPM version of things right now. Anything comes in my mind. I'm here, and while you're here doing something, you're driving in your car, and you think of an idea for your business or one of your businesses. Where do you put it? iPhone, where do you put it? Diary, where do you put it? iPod, iPhone, iPhone. And how do you find it afterwards? How are you triggered to look at it again? So he goes back and reviews his app system. How do you do it? Right. Crisis, crisis makes me go get it. <laughs> how do you do it? I send an email to myself, oh good, more emails <laughs> with more to-dos, right? So I don't care what your system is, but when you have RPM, you'll have one place you put it. For right now, you need one place to put it. Now, the problem is most of us have lives that if you put everything in one place, it just becomes even more overwhelming. Who knows what I'm talking about here? So the first step, I'll just tell you that, is C is capture. you got to capture. And the motion I do is like this. Imagine doing this, like physically capturing it, pulling it out of my head, and putting it in one place. I don't care what your one place has got to be one place. Now, ideally, in that one place, you'd have some categories so you don't throw everything on one giant list. Does that make sense? So you might have a category for me. I have companies. So I have Robbins Research. I have Namali Resort. I have Metabolife. I have all these different companies. So I'll, I'll drop it in that area as an example. Or roles for me as a father. I don't have time to demonstrate this for you, but just know the first thing you want to do is keep it out of your head. Have it in one place. Why do you want to do that? Keep lots of extra mental RAM available. When you have to keep thinking about stuff, it creates inner stress. If you know it's there, and you know you're going to look at it consistently, like you do it once a week, once a day, and you're going to review it and do something with it. Something with it might be, forget it, I'll do it later, tomorrow. But you're going to do something with it, you'll be able to let go. How many think that's pretty much something you try to do already? Most people try to do this, don't you? But the reason most people don't do it is because making lists after a while, they stop doing. Tell me why they stop doing it. Who's made lists and then not kept the list up, your quote to-do list? Why don't you keep those to-do lists up? Because every time you go there, there's so damn what? There's, how many have always got more to do, if you do make the list, than you have time? So it inherently says, why am I doing this? RPM is a different mindset. Our mindset is, we're just first capturing it. We know we're not going to do most of this. But we need to be able to later, when it's time, decide which things are worth doing. And more importantly, what are we really after? We're going to use these to trigger us to say, all this relates to maybe something more important. How many follow the philosophical difference here? Say I. My goal is not get things done. This is not GTD. This is use the things you need to get do to stimulate a higher level of thinking of what you really want, why you want it, and become very strategic about how to get that. And many of these things may go away. Or they just won't matter. But you do have to capture it because otherwise it's in your head. So I have a lot of systems of doing it, but if you never saw me again, the most basic thing you need is one place to capture. Does that make sense? And what's step one of RPM? It's a C. You got to what? Capture, which means get it out of your head, put it one place. Second thing, you got to make sense of all this crap. And the way you do that, step two is you create a plan. And a plan for me has three parts. 
And the three parts are three questions that I ask and three actions I take. And again, you'll learn this. I'm not trying to teach this all right now. I just want to plant some seeds in your mind. Is this okay? Yes. Are, is this useful? Yes. So when you're going home, you got all this captured stuff you just did here, right? Now you got to start to create a plan. you got to look at all this stuff and say, okay, there's more here than I can do. So what I really need is read all this stuff and start to see, well, all these things relate to one thing. All these relate to another. If I'm a mom and I made my list, and on the list I have things like i got to pick up the laundry, oh, i got to drive the kids to school, um, I've got to do this thing for the PTA, i got to clean the house, oh, i got to run my business that I run out of the house, i got to do the accounting, uh, I want to I wanna have to spend some time with my husband at the end of the day. Soccer mom, totally stressed out. But if I write all those things down and get them out of my head, and when I write them all down, I then start to put them together and go, you know, this, this, and this all relates to my kids. This, this, this all relates to the house being great. This, this, and this all relates to my business. And this, this, this is about my personal life being rich and happy. I'm able to do something really nice. I'm able to go from this, which is what your capture list looks like. You'll start writing it down. You go, I got to do this, and, that, and this, and this. And you start to feel good. It's out of my head. But then you go, oh, I got to do this, and I got to do this, and I got to do this. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do this, and 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 I got to do this. I got to do that too, and that too. So step two is I look at my capture list, and I create a plan. And the way I create a plan is I start to figure out what do I really want? That's what, that's what the world is saying to me. That's what's in my head. What do I want? I might start to group some things together. I might start to say, you know, let's take a look at this. You know something? Watch this. Watch this for a second. This item here, clean the house, and this thing and this thing and this thing, these all relate to the house. And my outcome there is I want to magically clean house because, why? It makes me feel fully alive. And then, oh, by the way, this, 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 and this all relates to my children. Oh, and this, this, and this relates to my business. Oh, no, yeah, this is me personally. Anybody see what happens? Suddenly, 80 action items, or 12 or 30, will turn into four outcomes. There's something here that I want for my home. There's something I want here for my kids. There's something I want here for my business. There's something I want for me. And what that does is now I can start to go, okay, instead of reading all these items, what do I really want for my kids? What's my outcome this week or today? And you get really, really clear about what you're after. You use this to take you to another level higher. Use this to trigger a higher vision instead of letting this limit you. And once you know what you want, that's the first question. So create a plan has three questions to it and three actions. First question is, what do I really what? Want. How many of you would feel different in your life just by this language change? What do I have to do versus what do I really want to accomplish? Would that change the way you feel about your life, yes or no? Yes. How does it feel with have to do? See, RPM, when you finally learn it, has many pieces to it. Above all else, it's a thinking process. And better thinking creates better results. It's that simple. So you don't have to ever use a piece of paper to think this way. From now on, all this stuff's happening, you go, what's my outcome? What am I really after? What do I want? What's the specific results? Like, what's the target? Let's, let's chunk up. I don't ever go in a meeting with anyone. What do you think the first words out of my mouth are when I sit down in a meeting after the hellos and the proper connections? What do you say? I always say, what are the outcomes for this meeting? Because how long the meeting is, is based on getting the results that we're there for. It makes a much more fulfilling life. Or if you can't get in that time, you know that outcome's still not done. We've got to come back and get that outcome done. How many follow what I'm talking about here? Say I. Now, when you get clear what your outcomes are, that's the first question of creating plans. Second question is, why do I want it? Why? Why is this important to me? Why is this something that really is a must for me? I don't have to do it. I want to do this. Why, will it, why is this transformative? What's exciting about this to me? And almost all of you have certain key words that are triggers for you. And language shapes your emotion. You want to have a nutritious meal or a delicious meal? 
You might say, I need a nutritious meal. But what if I said, this is a delicious nutritious meal? You're more in. If I said to you, I want to introduce you to this person. They're really nice versus they're delicious. <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about here? So when you, learn, uh, when you learn RPM, you're going to learn that RPM is a system of thinking, that RPM is the power of language. Because you can change a few words in your outcome. It'll totally change where you end up and what you're going after in your life. RPM is a visual chunking system, a way to take all that stuff you saw and group 82 things down to four. And guess what will happen to your stress level? Through the floor. Guess what happens to your concentration ability? Through the roof. What are you going to focus on? That's another one. RPM is a focusing tool. It makes you focus on what's most important because most people major in minor things. Am I making sense? So I, you got to know why are we doing this? And I always look at two levels of why. Why for me, why for the team. What's the big why? If I'm involving other people, if it's just me, then it's me. But I usually have the big why. So I said three, step one is capture. Step two is create the plan. There were three questions. What are they? Number one is what do I really? Or another word for that is what is my? Or another word for that is what is the? The result. And I eventually try to get it to a result because I want to make it measurable, if at all possible. If I can't get it measurable in a short time, I want major progress on as my outcome, right? Or complete something or whatever it is. My purpose are some key words. Write this down. Purpose, I should say activity without purpose is the drain to your life. Activity without purpose is the drain to your life. It's the drain to your wealth. It's the drain to your lifestyle. Three questions. What's my outcome? What's my purpose? What's my why? Third one, what's my massive action plan? Or another say, what do I need to what? Now you ask that question, it makes some sense. Because what to do depends on what your outcome is. Otherwise, what you're going to do is going to be based on stress, concern, fear, people interrupting you, reacting, demands. And so your life is nothing but a reaction tool. Of all the tools I have, this may be the most valuable one, ironically. Because this is the one how it all gets executed. And I don't teach it very often. So third question is, what's my massive action plan? What do I need to do to achieve this? And when you do that, you'll take things off your capture list and you'll cross them off as they fit in. Or you'll say, I don't even need to do that. So to create a plan, there's three questions and then there's three actions. This gets a little more technical, but I think you can pick it up real easy. You take those action items and you put them in order of importance. Does that make sense? But the way I do that, more quickly, is I go put a star next to the ones that are the 20% that's going to give me 80% of the result. Because I know I'm not going to do all these action items. I know even if I intend to, I'm going to be interrupted 20 million times. So I want to know what's the 20% of this list. I've got an outcome. i got a purpose. And this little block, the center of the target is the outcome. I see the purpose with all the juicy words, why I'm doing this. Now i got this list of 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 things, action items. They're all related to kids, that kid outcome. I'm not going to do all those today. Which are the 20% that make the biggest difference? I star those. And guess what else I do? I figure out what's the 20%, what's the, what I call it, what are the must items? My musts are the 20% that are going to make 80% of the difference. That way, every day, I can still succeed. That's why I still do my lists, and most people don't. Because I don't do lists. I come up with outcomes and purposes, and I got lists within them, and are highly prioritized with what matters. And later on, if I want to come back and be more, great. So... Three questions, three actions. The actions are, star the things that are must. Two, establish the real time. The real time is I go minimum to maximum. On each of those items, I go, how long is this really going to take? Why is that important? Because most of you overwhelm yourself and say, this will be, I just had a meeting with my team the other day, and I said, how long is this going to take? And somebody said, that'll probably take us 10 weeks. I said, okay, let's sit down and do it. Let's sit down and lay out where that 10 weeks is going to come from. And we're all done, it was about seven hours worth of work. Because we all overestimate when it's in our what? In our head. You sit down, look at each item, and you look at the 20%, and you mark, okay, 20 to 25 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. And by the way, at the end of the day, what do I look at? What are my start items? What's the minimum time necessary to get that result? That's what I go do. Same thing with my week. So three questions. I create a visual block where this separates from everything else. Below it, I'll spin a space and I'll create another block. When you learn RPM, you'll see that visually. I don't think I want to throw up for you right now. But basically, in the center of my page, I see the target of what I'm after. I write my result. To the right, I write my juice. 
purpose to left, I put my action list. Put in order of importance, boom. Asterisk, boom. Minimum must time, I'm ready to rock and roll. Here's the third one. Leverage. Leverage is critical. You know how I get so much done? Because I don't just get it done. I know the outcome, I know the purpose, and I look for leverage. Leverage is different than delegation. What's the problem with delegation? Delegation is you have all that needs to be done, so you give it to someone else, and you tell them it needs to be done, and when they don't do it, you're pissed off. Leverage says, I can move the biggest boulder in the world with a little bit of effort if I get something I can do it with, but I'm still part of it. So leverage is, if I'm going to leverage something here with Tom, I'm going to make sure Tom understands the what? The outcome. I want to make sure Tom understands the the purpose, the why, and the action, but I might say to Tom, if you can get this done without this action or better action, go for it, baby. And I want to talk to you on this date, and we got a promise, and we're going to check in before it's needed. So there's no surprises. And if you're having problems, Tom, come back to me, because we're partners on this. That I call leverage. Different than delegation. Who sees the difference here? Say I. So three questions. What creates the plan? Three questions with a block. Three actions. Where's my must? What's my minimum must times? Where's my leverage? And you know what I do when I have no time? There is time. I just got to leverage it. You know what I'm saying? You say, I have no one to leverage it to. You know, Shane over here, right? I got all the stuff he wants to do. He can't leverage it. But Shane's answer was hire somebody. Then he thinks about what it's going to take and goes $125,000. I can't do that now. He's getting caught up in one way to get the outcome. Leverage. He goes through his list and goes, what if I got someone to do 20% of this stuff? I, got, I could spend 20 grand to get that much freedom. I could pay for it times 10. Hmm. And if I'm really productive, my productivity should enhance the world, not only my clients and customers, but it should provide jobs for other people. And if there's anything you hate to do, it's because you're either ineffective at it or you don't think it's very important, but it is urgent. So you need to hire somebody for those things. And ideally, somebody who loves that job. You're never going to grow when your time is eaten up for activities that aren't that important. Activity without high levels of purpose is the drain of your fortune. Do it now. If you can't get it all now, do a part of it now. Leverage is power. Leverage is ultimate power.